are in a game that I'm making. Uh, we'll show this off on stream a little bit. And I've got all of these characters which will need an animation blueprint. So they'll all need to be able to idle and walk and run. But I don't want to make 21 different animation blueprints for all of these characters. I want to make one animation blueprint and use it on all of them, like quite simply. That's what I'm going to show you is how to have one animation blueprint that you can use for all of your enemies or characters and swap the animations out on a like skeleton by skeleton basis. And it should speed up your workflow for creating these enemies and the interactions that they could have as well. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment, drop a subscription and Keep tuned for more quick wins and easy fun tips. Now, an animation blueprint requires a skeleton. So if we right click, make a animation and then an animation blueprint, you'd have to select a skeleton for each of these. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a template which doesn't require a skeleton. So we're going to click create. and This will be our ABP master. And then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to add a default slot in here so that we can play animations on these so slot default. And then I'm going to right click and make a state machine. And this will be state machine. And then inside here, I'm going to add state, add state. And this will be the idle walk run state. Idle walk run. And then from here, I'm just going to get a blend space player. Okay, now this bit's the important thing to blend space player. And now I'm going to promote the X and the Y to a variable. And this will be the speed and the direction. So if they've only got like forward locomotion, they don't have like strafing and stuff. That's all fine because it'll all blend it inside this. Now in the event graph, on event blueprint initialize animation, we're going to get this pawn owner here and we're going to cast to character. And then we'll promote this to a variable. And from character, we'll get movement component, get character movement. And then we'll promote this to a variable as well, which will be the character movement component. And we'll compile. And now, like you might have a BP bat or a BP bear. So I've got like bat, bear and boar, all these different blueprints. And I don't need to cast all of them. I just need to cast to the character because the only thing I'm interested in is on this update animation. So I'll get our character and I'm going to right click it. Because the only thing I'm interested in is the speed and the direction that it's moving. And maybe if it's fallen. So if you wanted to add jumps to them as well, then you could just drag off here and add a jump. In fact, what we'll do is this, that's how you set up a blend space. I'm going to set up one more. So I'm going to add a state and this will just be idle on its own. Just to show you how to do uh, just a normal loop. So we just want this time, we want a sequence player. So what we're going to do now is in the event graph of this as character here, I'm just going to get a sequence, so I'm going to drag out and press S. And then from character movement, I'm going to create a basic setup of the speed and direction. So velocity, we're going to promote that to a variable that's going to be velocity. And then I'm going to get the vector length, which is how long along the X and Y something's going. And then we're going to set that to be the speed. So the velocity will be sort of how quick it's moving. And then we'll make that get the speed. It just means that the speed isn't affected by how fast it's moving up and down. That's all. And then I'm going to get as character. And then we're going to get at uh, rotation. And then we're going to call the calculate direction function. And the velocity will be the velocity. 
and this will be the direction so that we can set direction from here as well and then on then one gonna get character movement get current acceleration and make sure that's not equal to zero and we're just going to check that the speed is greater than three so we'll just have an and on both of these make sure that it the current acceleration is moving and that at the speed we are moving at more than three we can promote this to a variable this can be should move and then we'll put that into there and then if you wanted to add fall in you just get character movement and check that is falling just promote that to a variable as well and that will be falling and then in our states so back in our animation graph so i'm going to, go to anim graph this state machine and we can connect idle walk run back to idle and this will just be should move and then the one that goes back will be should move not so that's our template all set up so what you need to do now is we find this template so we've got this abp master right click it and create a child anim with skeleton and now you can select a skeleton so now i've got a bear I can create a child. I can open up the bear. And up here, these anim graph overrides. I can now put in the idle for the bear. Compile that. And there's my bear doing the idle. And if I had a blend space for the speed, I could put that in. So you will need to set up a blend space for each of these on their own so that they go from idle, walk, and run. But I can just keep right clicking the master, creating a new child, we'll get the hermit crab. Open this one up, come to the top, come to idle, we'll add a new idle. That just takes away a lot of the repetitive nature of building these animation blueprints. And you know that if you actually add something to this master, then all of these children will inherit it as well. So if we wanted a new state, like I've said, of like jumping or something, so we'll just open the state machine and we would add the jump state here and the falling state. And then the landing state as well. And then we'd all go back sort of around. But all of these would inherit all of that. So once I put in a sequence, so let's update this with a sequence player, compile and save it. We'll get this now jump part as well. So every time I put something new in here, we can just update it. And if we wanted to, on this ABP master in the event graph, we could set this up to go straight to our enemy and we can inherit all of those functions and special functions for our enemies so they can all just take all of the code without having to do much and have their own custom set up so for animations and blend spaces and stuff so it's a really powerful tool the template abp alongside the animation graph overrides and i hope you've learned something from that so we've now got two members on our channel. We have the original dev Danny Diggs making his PS1 inspired game. Go check him out. It looks absolutely awesome. Doing some procedural animations for that as well. Absolutely fantastic work there. And then we have Imagine Bravery as well, who joins us again. Thank you for the super thanks, Imagine Bravery. That was wonderful of you. And thanks for joining us on this journey as a member. They are working on a RPG type game. I'll leave a link to their channel in the description. Go check them out. Thank you very much, both of you, for all the support. And thank you, everyone, for the support. If you want to become a member of the YouTube, then click that Join button. They're nice and cheap. We do shout-outs, and I appreciate all of the support. Thank you very much. Have a great day.